So um, next up, uh, we have uh, Helen Papaganis, and um, who's uh, been here a few times with uh, some very interesting uh, art uh, before. So um, she'll be uh, sharing with us about infinity augmented reality. So. All right, how, oh, audio's good, right? You can hear me okay? Okay, so I thought I'd start out with an icebreaker. How many of you would like to hear a really embarrassing story? Yeah, okay, all right. Um, we're all friends here, so I thought I would share it with you. Um, it's not related to my presentation, but it is related to the conference. Um, we have a very nice pool here at the Hyatt, and yesterday I indulged in it, I enjoyed it. And I was coming back from the pool in my bikini, walking through the hotel hallway, and I see a gentleman approaching me, and it's just the two of us in the hallway. And lo and behold, of course, who is it but it's Steve Mann, father of wearable computing, wearing his glass device. And I was immediately mortified and put my head down, and I swiftly walked through that hallway, thinking that the next time he sees me will be clothed at this conference, and his glass device will tell him that that was the girl in the hallway in the bikini. So I'm going to have a little chat with him. I don't think Steve is here, but hi, Steve, um, fellow Tarantonian um, bikini girl, and um, I'll have to take a look at your log um, from yesterday. So um, my name is Helen Papagenis. I am from um, Infinity Augmented Reality in New York City. I am the Chief Innovation Officer there, and um, I've been working with augmented reality for the past um, eight years. My background is in design and art. And um, I'm also completing my PhD, and I'm really honored and proud to have my, um, my PhD supervisor here, Dr. Caitlin Fisher, who's been an incredible mentor. So if you have a chance, um, say hello to her and have a chat. So that said, um, I thought since we've been looking at AR all day, and we'll be looking at AR tomorrow and the next um, couple of days, that I would do a presentation that had no augmented reality. Okay, so we're going to take a 15-minute break from augmented reality. I'm going to show you examples that are outside of AR. I thought it would be helpful and interesting for us to gain another perspective um, by looking at examples outside of AR. So no AR examples in this presentation. Um, again, since we're among friends here, um, I think it's okay that we talk about it. This is our past. We don't need to be shamed by it. But augmented reality, for the most part, really has been a gimmick. So the silver lining here is that we have a tremendous opportunity ahead of us to do really incredible things. Like just look at the technology downstairs at the expo and uh, you know, all of the wonderful talks that we've had so far today. Um, right now it's about um, designing contextual experiences and moving forward and moving beyond gimmickry. So the onus is on us to really put this amazing technology to good use. Up until now, there have been two predominant principles in augmented reality. Um, this is overlay and transformation. And when I say transformation, I mean um, the impression of a transformation, so like a, um, a visual illusion, so something appearing to uh, sh sh um, shift shapes or change form. A lot of AR looks like this right now. And this, there are a lot of dinosaurs in augmented reality. Um, again, gimmick, too many dinosaurs. This one has guns, but it's still a dinosaur. Um, Four-eyed cat, um, pretty fantastic, but gimmick. Um, and, you know, look, I should say, um, I am an artist. I do really appreciate artistic endeavors in AR. I have worked as an artist in AR. Um, it is a fantastic medium to work within. You know, I've talked a lot about AR and storytelling in the past. Um, however, you know, it's really important that we link narrative um, and storytelling to context so that we avoid um, gimmick. Another example outside of AR um, called Calm in a Cup. This is a tea bag uh, that transforms when you place it in hot water. So they're calling it uh, transform stressful symbols into calm. Uh, so an angry bear turns into a cute, cuddly, smiley um, teddy. Cute project, still a gimmick. This is a great design, in my opinion, um, clear kayak. And I think it's um, you know, something that we've been trying to achieve as an industry. Um, you know, to have less of a barrier between us and reality. And, you know, we're getting there. Our devices are becoming more ubiquitous, but we're not quite there. I have a lot of interesting conversations with customs agents at airports. When they ask me, so what do you do? And I say, okay, um, have you heard of augmented reality? And it's usually met by a, a blank face. And then I say, okay, are you familiar, familiar with 
virtual reality. And um, the last time I, I was at an airport, um, the customs agent just, just stared at me and he shook his head and he said, lady, I have enough problems with reality. And I said, that's brilliant. I'm using that in my talk. And you know, this is true. We do have enough problems with reality. We don't need any more gimmickry. Um, you know, what's missing in AR right now is, is meaning plus context, which equals relevance. And so we need to ask, how can AR be more responsive to human needs and move beyond gimmickry? And this is what we're doing at Infinity Augmented Reality. We're asking, how can AR be used to enhance our lives and our experiences? And we're looking at it from a human perspective. So no more dinosaurs. <laughs> more relevance, less dinosaurs. And um, you know, joking aside, this is actually hurting us as an industry. We really, really need to get beyond the gimmickry. Um, you know, I, I often talk about um, in, in my past talks. I've talked about cinema a lot and how augmented reality compares to a point where you know cinema was first new and we were just entranced by the magic of the machine. And you know, the next step for us is to really take that magic of the machine and make it into something really meaningful and create these wonderful contextual experiences that are human-centered. So augmented reality as we know it, AR, this is the past. Um, the next phase of augmented reality is really human-centered design um, with a focus on contextual experiences. So at Infinity, we're proposing that we take AR and ref re rephrase it to amazing relevance. Um, and so this is what we're working on, the next generation of AR, and it's coming from a place of, of human needs. This is a great video I'm going to show you um, around human-centered design solutions. So this is a problem with a very human solution, again, outside of AR, um, but very relevant. Oh, sorry, let's see, I don't know if I have audio plugged in. Where's my audio? I'm going to the fish market. We're going to check it out. It's supposed to be mayhem down there. Scott's ordering our tickets now for the subway and be down there in 25 minutes, maybe half an hour. Uh, I don't understand. There's no line. The line that I want, there's no line. I just press the assistance button. It says, please wait a moment. Hey, we'll touch some Hi. Um, I want to uh, select the uh, Hibiu. Hibiu hmm? line? Hibiu uh, line? <laughs> Thank you. Did he come out of that machine? <laughs> I love that video. It's so fantastic. There's a man in the box that actually comes out and helps you, right? How more human can you get than that? Like, fantastic. So, um, oh no, I've lost, uh, just a second, I've lost some slides here. Um, so, yeah, augmented reality currently looks like this four-eyed cat. That's what we need to get away from. And amazing relevance looks like the video I just showed you. And so we must move from augmented reality to reality. That's come up this morning a lot. Um, you know, we've got to get past this gimmickry and um, past image tracking and to a real human-centered um, contextual experience that takes place in a deep relationship with reality. And it's just, it's not just on top of real life anymore. So gimmick out, relevance in. You probably heard my Canadian out there. I get that a lot. Um, overlay gone. This then becomes a deep relationship with reality. So it's no longer something superficial that's just placed on top of reality, but it's actually a deep human relationship with um, what we're experiencing. Transformation gone. And um, again, so human-centered transformation um, comes in, meeting a, a real need um, and offering a truly meaningful experience. Someone I personally uh, really admire is um, Genevieve Bell. She is the uh, Director of Interaction and Experience Research at Intel. And what's um, one of the great things about um, Genevieve, um, her background is in anthropology. 
And we really need more of this as we, as we move forward um, in augmented reality. So there's this great video. It's five minutes long. I'm not going to show it to you. I'm going to you know, highlight a few things from the talk. Um, but you can look it up. Um, if you do a search for Genevieve Bell Computing 2020, I'm sure you'll come across it. So you know, what she says is that today, a great deal of work goes into getting goodness out of our computing technology. And we have to tell it a tremendous amount. Now, that's not amazing. However, she says it's safe to imagine 10 years from now that our devices are going to know us in a very different way. And that's truly amazing. And I think that we are a lot closer to that than 10 years from now. She goes on to say that um, these devices are going to be more intuitive about who we are. They're going to have a memory of us, and so that speaks to relevance. And as a result, not be so much of an interaction, but again, a relationship. And this is where we get back to the human element. You know, where these devices might anticipate what we are doing, um, where they might actually deliberately do things on our behalves that right now we, could begin, um, we can't begin to even imagine. The last example I'm going to show you um, is the banana phone. Um, how many of you have seen the invoked computing video? Nobody? OK, of course. Come on, a couple of you. Um, so let's have a look at this. A research group at the University of Tokyo are creating a new paradigm in human-computer interaction, dubbed invoked computing. The idea is to turn everyday objects into computer interfaces and communication devices. For example, if you make a gesture, the computer should be able to recognize this as I want to telephone. So with the iPhone, for example, you have everything in a small device, but you have to learn how to use it. Here we want to do the opposite. The computer will have to learn what you want to do. And you want to use a laptop, you just make a, a gesture and he will recognize this, project the screen, the keyboard and everything. You don't have to carry a new device or no more battery or everything. Everything is ubiquitous, you know, ubiquitous augmented reality. The system won the grand prize at Laval Virtual 2011 in France and was on display at the Digital Content Expo in Tokyo with two proof-of-concept prototypes. The first demonstration turns a regular banana into a phone by using a high-speed camera to track the banana and a parametric speaker array to direct the sound in a very narrow beam. This creates the feeling that the sound is coming out of the banana. The second demonstration is a laptop in a pizza box. The video and sound is projected onto the lid of the pizza box, and the user can interact with it by moving the playhead and changing the volume. So for this prototype here, we have tracking to get the position of the augmented object, and then we project sound on the object as well as video. So usually for augmented reality, we can use Google's we can use even iPhone or iPad with a camera. But you have a device and you see augmented reality through this device. Here it's special augmented reality. So we use projector to directly augment objects. So it's multi-user and, and the particularity here is that we have also sound as well as a video. In the future, they want to broaden the range of gestures and objects that the system can recognize and interact with, with the goal being the creation of a ubiquitous augmented reality system, which can learn and anticipate the intentions of the user in various situations. Diginfo News. Yeah, I absolutely love that. Um, so, getting back to that clear kayak example I showed you earlier, um, you know, perhaps invoke computing is the answer to this clear kayak problem. Um, this notion of any object transforming into what you need with no barrier. It just simply is your reality and it meets your need in your actual setting and your environment. So remember, AR now stands for amazing relevance. 
Um, we each have an incredible amount of work to do in, in our industry, and we each contribute a really unique piece to this larger puzzle. So, um, you know, to, to really make AR amazing. So I hope you'll join us in this new path and direction, and um, thank you so much. So, questions? Oh, okay. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, that was uh, very thought-provoking. So actually, I don't have any questions at the moment <laughs> either. Um, so right. I, I hope that's what the, uh, the audience issue as well. So, uh, so thank you again. Thank you. Uh, it, was, it was nice to have a break of uh, AR, uh, <laughs> for sure.